There are citrotters who have 25 yearlings in this year's um, uh, Nutrien Melbourne sale. Anton Galeno joins me. Anton, thank you. We're going to do a virtual parade. Thank you very much for joining me, mate. Yeah, cheers, Paul. Thanks for having us. I want to try and break down some barriers. With some of these uh, virtual parades, I've probably tried to find out um, intricacies, if you like, of the horses. But again, with the harassed citrotters and the international bloodlines they have coming in, we're going to centre this one around the broodmares and understanding, I suppose, what some of the pages are and, and, you know, breaking it down for people who might not be across all the international um, bloodlines. Yeah, yeah, obviously it's um, it's quite new to, to a lot of us and, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's uh, new bloodlines and, and new breeds and, um, yeah, you know, we've, we've worked hard to try and get these horses here and, um, yeah, it's good to get it get it out there I guess. Well it is indeed we've got Classic Connection, he's got 10 yearlings in it what we might do with the stay-ins, we'll probably just do the pedigrees of the fillies so people can watch them watch the horses trot, at the end of it we'll come back we'll have a just a quick little recap and we might also just go through some of the, the highlights if you like of some of those stay-ins as well, you and I have already done one on Classic Connection, I encourage people to watch it, I might share it again um, out of this but we'll start them off with the, each of the yearlings, uh, we'll go and through them in numerical order um, and then we'll come back at the end, we'll touch on a couple of the other stay-ins that we don't really know but um, we'll get it started mate. Sounds good. Right, Anton, lot 166 will be the first of the yearlings. This is a Bay Colt by Quaker Jet out of Allegra Dream and Andover Hall mare. Yeah, uh, Paul, it's a, obviously an international family. It's a, a mare that uh, has been imported from Italy um, from a very, very strong family. You know, you see the, um, the, the second dam, Audrey de Gessolo, there. She's uh, obviously made uh, $270,000 and uh, was a Group 3 winner in... Uh, in Italy and a group two winner in Italy also so you know she's um, been a good producer and um, a bit of an update there on this horse too um, the, f the three quarter brother by Love You there explosive acts in Italy uh, has actually won there the other day in I think uh, 52 and a piece so wow. yeah he he's looks like he's going to be quite a good horse so yeah it's um, a very very strong um, international families you can see just winner after winner and um, you know this colt here is a, is a beautiful type of colt and um, yeah it's a family that we, we love. Try and say on to uh, topic when I can but um, I asked you this the other day but the Italian form uh, worldwide where does it stack up? Yeah it's it's very very strong um, and as I said to you earlier the the early sort of uh, 90s early 2000s there um, was probably amongst the strongest in the world, Italy, you know, it had a great racing program and, um, you know, due to, you know, sort of a bunch of different reasons, it um, got a bit quiet there, but now it's making a real resurgence, you know, um, uh, the Italian breed, everyone's sort of after it, you know, Varenne's been an amazing uh, stallion, you know, obviously he's an Italian bred horse and you know, even as a brood mess, I, you know, the likes of, uh, in America, the likes of Mission Brief and Tactical Landing, you know, they're out of a Varenne mare, so yeah, the Italian breed has made a real resurgence in this last couple of years. It's lot 166, the Quaker Jet Bay Colt out of Allegra Dream, and very importantly, the uh, three horses on that page listed there are all three quarter um, brothers or sisters um, to this horse here, which is pretty important as well. 166. Lot number 194 is the Chestnut Colt, or used to me, out of Beautiful River, a Quaker Jet mare. Yeah, this is a, another imported family. Um, Paul, you know, the, the mare herself, Beautiful River, was a very good race mare. Um, made just short of $200,000. And, um, yeah, the uh, family's full of very, very good horses. You know, Enzo River, Gamble River, uh, Crystal River, they've all made over $400,000. You know, you can see it's a very, very good family full of good horses. And um, when you get down low, it just keeps getting better. You know, horses like Rolling de Hedepi and Gu de Hedepi, they're, um, they're top horses in France. And um, yeah, this colt here, uh, this was one that Pat was really keen on you know, breeding to, used to me to try and get that three by four cocktail jet cross. Um, it's worked so well in, in France and Europe. Um, so that was a, a big, uh, big catalyst, I guess, for, for why Pat put uh, this mare in particular to use to me. It's a cross that works and that's what we want people to follow. There's also a bit of an important update there with Lo Lof Lotus Louise, uh, Lu Lotus Lewis, will I go with? I think Lo so, yeah. We'll go well, with the Colt, so I'm saying it's Lewis. Lotus Lewis, uh, Robbie Morris, you said, has got and qualified just the other day in pretty good style. Yeah, yeah, I actually watched a qualifier. He looks super. Um, he just got beat 20 there in, I think, a 56 mile rate. So he looks like he's a, a horse that's going to be... Um, a good racehorse, you know, I know, talking to Robbie, he said early days that he loved him, so yeah, that's a big update that that horse is qualified, and um, yeah, I would say that he's probably getting him ready for the Nutrient Series. 
That's lot 194, the used to me chestnut colt stands out too, he does. Out of the Quaker Jet Mare in Beautiful River, a 3x4 to cocktail jet too, as Anton alluded to. Well, our lot number 200 is the Quaker Jet uh, Bay Philly out of the Ready Cash Mare in Bootmont. Yeah, Paul, yeah, it's obviously a family that um, yeah, basically we all know here down under. It's, a, it's probably, I think, the, the best family in the stud book, um, personally, you know, this Maori. Mary's idol family, um, yeah, Bootmont, she was very talented, you know, we only had a small, a short racing career um, due to no fault of her own, we actually stopped because we, we wanted to breed from her, you know, she was valuable broodmare to the farm, being by ready cash, but um, yeah, this is uh, another one that we were really keen to, to put to Quaker Jet to, to sort of get a little bit of strength um, into the family, and um, obviously, yeah, she's a sister to Vincennes and Maydan, and and uh, basically a three-quarter sister in blood to Revelstoke, um, you know, who's done a great job for us here at the farm. So, yeah, it's a fantastic family, um, beautiful, straightforward filly, um, great cross, you know, the Quaker Jet Love You Over Ready Cash cross has um, been the hottest cross there, I guess, in, in France. Uh, so, yeah, that was why we went this way, and it's uh, produced a beautiful filly. No, as indeed, and as you said there, with Revelstoke as well, bred very, very similarly. That is lot number 200, the Quaker Jet out of Bootmont. Right, oh, lot number 205 is the Bay Philly out of Eridan. We'll touch on the stands at the end of this. Out of the you know, horse a lot of people will know a lot about class of her own, Anton. Yeah, classic um, family here, Paul. It's a, a family of, as you can see, always ready and uh, let me through Lord Liam, etc. It's um, I think it's actually the family of Sundon's gift, uh, if you go further down, but as you can see, there's only two dams on the page. Um, she's a three-quarter sister, always ready, who's been a great horse for us here at the farm. Uh, he was Australian Tier old trotter of the year and now stands stud for us. And, um, yeah, this is a, a cracking little filly, you know. It's very typical of the family, um, very go-forward, sort of, you know, want to, want to get on with the job sort of filly. And, um, yeah, it's a filly that we're, we're really, really proud of. Only the fourth foal out of the mare as well, and she's only had three foals, three old and older, and three of those, all three of those have um, won. It's a very current family as well, so it's a pretty easy one. We're touching on a lot of the European lines, but a lot of people will know this family. This is lot number 205, the Eridan, out of class of her own. Lot number 216 is a Bay Philly by Classic Connection out of Dukon. Just want to make, before you touch on this one, Anton, be aware that this is a filly. When you open up the pedigree page in the hard copied um, catalogue, it'll have him as a colt. Uh, he is definitely a she, so this is like 216 a bay filly. Anton? Yeah, no, it's another family that, that uh, is obviously from an imported mare, a French mare, Glenferry Unixa, but it's a family we know and, you know, had down here for quite a while. You know, obviously Unixa being the dam of Unbella Lure and Bogas on and Trady Lady and um, another very, very strong French family, you know, just uh, full of good, not only winners, but good horses. Paul, you know, um, the fourth Dan, the Dam of O'Donnell and Mr. President, you know, they're horses that have obviously both made over half a million and, um, you know, just a very, very good family. Um, you know, the mayor herself, she was a quite talented mayor, Ducoin. You know, we um, stopped with her. She she went sore, so we decided to stop. But, um, you know, being a Muscle Hill sister to Unbella Lure, we, we couldn't wait to get her in the broodmare barn. And, um, yeah, she's, we think, a perfect cross with Classic Connection. You know, you've got the Love You with the Muscle Hill, which has worked, um, you know, in North America quite well. So, yeah, we couldn't wait to get her to the breeding barn. And she's thrown a beautiful filly. It's a big, striking, good type of filly. And, um, yeah, I think she's going to be a, a nice horse for someone, hopefully. Unique opportunity, isn't it? You've got to love you stay in a Muscle Hill mare, and this is a filly. Not only can you race it, uh, have some fun on the racetrack, but then you've got a unique opportunity in the broodmare barn here in Australia as well with uh, bloodlines from both sides of the ditch, or both sides of the other side of the world, if you like, uh, and the American and, the, and also the French. Yeah, without a doubt, Paul. You know, that's, that's what we're trying to do. You know, we're trying to mix that French and American blood, and, um, yeah, it's no secret. Like, we're not uh, re recreating a wheel or anything. It's just been working so well all over the world. Um, yeah, and we're, we're so fortunate to have access to these horses down here. Lot number 219 is the Father Patrick Bay Colt out of the Cocktail Jet Mare here in Elusive Jet. Yeah, another um, imported mare, uh, beautiful co uh, Cocktail Jet Mare that we've decided to go with the, the Franco-American cross, Paul, you know, the, the Father Patrick over the French Mare. 
um, which has been so successful now all over the world, obviously, the, the Franco-American Cross. And, yeah, this is a fantastic family. You know, the second dam has been a, a broodmare gem there, likely Jet. You know, Droll the Jet was obviously he's a superstar, made over a million dollars in France. And, you know, Red Light Jet, he stands at stud. Um, Alex the Winner was a very, very good horse. I know that um, John Etienne Dubois had huge, huge high high uh, raps on him, but he, he went amiss. But um, I know he said to me multiple times that Alex the Winner was a potential superstar. You know, he thought he was that good. Um, but, yeah, it's it's a very, very good family, this family. And um, you know, this is a nice, nice cult, a, a top example of a Franco-American cross. Lot number 219, the father Patrick out of the cocktail jet mirror in elusive jet. Lot 221 is a Bay Philly by Used to Me out of Inspex Libre. Yeah, it's a it's another Philly Paul from a beautiful family, you know, the family of Lyle Creek, and um, yeah, been a little bit of a, a hard luck story, I guess. The family, you know, the mayor uh, King Kasla, she only, you know, she was a fantastic race mare, and um, only unfortunately had the one foal and, and got kicked and, and had to be put down. So um, this was a mare that Pat was really really keen to get to the breeding barn. Um, you know, being a ready cash out of a love you, out of a pine chip mare, it's just an amazing sire line um, or for, through a broodmare. So, yeah, and obviously, you know, being from the family of um, you know, Lyle Creek, such a famous New Zealand family, such a good family. And, um, yeah, it's a family we've had a bit of luck with, you know, horses like La Serena and that. And um, it's, a, yeah, beautiful filly. Um, one that, you know, we, we really think can... Um, be, be hopefully a good racehorse as well as a good broodmare. Yeah, trotted out beautiful too. It was one of my, one that took my eye when I was doing the videos, I must say. That's lot 221, the used to be out of Inspex Libre. Lot 225 is the first of the always ready. There's two on offer here. This is a brown black colt out of Phil, Phil Dunsor. Dun, Phil Dunsor, I'll go with. So hopefully, I'm pretty close, Anton. Yeah, no, it's Phil Dunsor. Right, oh. <laughs> close enough, though. <Nope. laughs> yeah, no, it's. Um, uh, a cracking colt, this colt, real sharp looking colt, and um, from a very, very, you know, obviously a great French family. Uh, the fourth dam's the, the dam of Love You, Paul. So, yeah, needs no introduction, this family, you know, the dam of Love You, the fourth dam there. It uh, goes back to one of the probably the best families in the French stud book, uh, the great Nesmil, um, etc. So, yeah, you can see the third dam's the dam of So Lovely Girl, who's top racehorse there, and. Um, yeah, fantastic French family. What do yeah. we do? <laughs> the rain's and, um, coming down, but we're we'll still really, really sharp colt. You know, this is a uh, a big mare, a big strong mare. We wanted to breed to um, always ready to give him a good opportunity. And um, yeah, no, we, I think we got it right because she's thrown a beautiful colt. It's a huge little update. That's what I've come here for. Um, guilty of love, you'll see there, love you. You can see quite often uh, some names that we probably see come over pedigrees from time to time, but that is the champion sire in love you. What a unique opportunity for people uh, to be able to purchase a horse, <laughs> what, three generations removed from love you. Yeah, yeah, no, it is. It's, um, you know, credit to Pat. He's obviously worked hard to, to get access to these mares, and, um, yeah, not too many um, can say that they've got a, a direct descendant from love you. So, yeah, and, and obviously being by uh, always ready is a ready cash son. Um, yeah, he's a, he's a beautiful colt. Absolutely, that's lot number 225, as I said, the first of the always readies at a Philly Dunsaw. Lot number 231 is a Bay Philly by Southwind Frank, the Muscle Hill Stallion at a Fiesta de Fur. Yeah, once again, poor and imported family. Um, you can see it's the, the third dam there of a very, very good stallion in, um, in France called Look the Star. Yeah, he's one of the top stallions there and um, direct descendant of a very, very good racehorse there at the moment called Feeling Cash. So it's a, it's a family that's very, very current and very hot. You know, um, uh, you go right down to the, to the fourth dam, the dam of Reynoso, who's uh, obviously a very good horse, made $827,000. So as you can see, not only is there... Uh, very good winners in the family. He's also actual superstar. So, yeah, it's um, a very, very nice filly. And once again, you know, not only do you get the chance to get a good racehorse, you get a, a potential top broodmare too. So, yeah, this is a, a filly that, you know, we, we really sat down and we, we wanted to go to a Muscle Hill line horse with this mare um, to get the Franco-American cross. And, um, yeah, this is what we've, we've come up with. This is lot number 231, the Southwind Frank Bay filly at a Fiesta de Fur. Lot number 233 is the Chestnut Colt by Classic 
connection out of the use to me, Mayor, in gear on Anton? Yeah, this, um, this particular mare, Paul, this was a mare that um, I thought was probably one of the most talented horses that we've ever had probably not make the races. You know, she um, unfortunately injured a leg, but... Um, you know, I can I can honestly say she was very very good. The mum gear on, um, we thought she was our best of the year for sure. And um, obviously, she, you know, out of a, a broodmare gem in Pretty Peggy Sue, you know, she's already the dam of Pretty Majestic Kinvara Sue and Ravon Hall, and yeah, it goes down to the fantastic Maori family. Um, you know, horses like Spider Girl, King, Zena, uh, etc. So. Yeah, this is a, a beautiful big colt, big strong colt. Um, you know, once again, you've got that three by four cocktail jet and um, out of a very, very good current family. And um, yeah, I would have loved to have seen what the mum could have done had she stayed sound. She was, oh, she gave me a great feel. And, and um, yeah, so I know, uh, you know, I've got a lot of faith in this mare. No, I know and a couple of staff members had a bit of a soft spot for this horse. This is lot number 233, the classic connection and the used to be Mary in Giron, a chestnut colt. Lot 235 is a bay filly by classic connection um, out of Glen Ferry, Yenixa. Brilliant family, this Anton. Yeah, uh, you know, this mare I think is starting to sort of really be one of them blue hens, Paul. You know, I thought... Um you know, we, we sort of got lucky there with Unbella Lur, but I think she's sort of proven herself near now that she's actually just a great producer. Um, obviously, the dam of Unbella Lur and, um, you know, Bogarson, he he done a great little job, Bogarson, and he had soundness issues and, and um, you know, and then obviously she's thrown the next one, Trady Lady, who, who's done a great job on the Nutrient Race last year. So it's a very, very strong French family. Um, this filly in particular, um, for me, she's always been a standout filly. Um, in the paddock, watching them grow, uh, even before I sort of knew who she actually was, she was a standout filly for me. And um, yeah, from a very, very good, strong French family, and um, another great example of a classic connection filly, this big, strong bone filly, and um, yeah, beautiful type. Incredibly light on her feet as well. That is lot number 235, the classic connection bay filly out of Glen Ferry, Unixa. Lot 242 is the always ready Bay Colt out of the Heavenly Sister. This is a family, a lot of people will be well and truly aware of this family right at the minute, Anton, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's probably, you know, one of the best families uh, going around at the moment, Paul, it's fair to say. You know, obviously, Just Believe's um, been an amazing horse, you know. It's a massive update there on, on from what's on the page. You know, he's now made over a million dollars. And, um, yeah, she was a great mare, Heavenly Sister. She was a very, very good race mare. Uh, made over 120,000 and um, multiple sort of group one placed and, and open age winning mare and um, you know she's only had the one foal and, and one foal to the races and keep believing it's already won a race and um, yeah this this colt here uh, is a beautiful type himself you know he's just a, uh, looks like a good up you know, early sort of get up and go sort of colt and um, yeah, we, we once again we wanted to give Always Ready a real good opportunity and give him a couple of nice mares. So um, we, we picked Heavenly Sister, and um, yeah, she's produced a beautiful colt for us. Uh, has indeed. So this is the second of the Always Be Always Ready um, being offered up for the Yabby Dam's um, draft. This is lot number 242, the Bay Colt by Always Ready out of um, Heavenly Sister herself, a half sister to Just Believe. So don't have to say too much more about this one. That's for sure. Lot 248 is the Bay Colt by Classic Connection out of uh, the champion mare who's left champion fillies as well. I'm ready, set, Anton. A huge, unique opportunity to buying a, a three-quarter in blood to I'm ready, Jet. Yeah, no, it's, um, it's a great opportunity, Paul, obviously, to buy a, buy a three-quarter in blood to I'm ready, Jet, you know, and, and, yeah, update with her, obviously. You know, she won the Something About Mary there recently and and um, got her prize money up over 630000 So... I'm ready set, yeah, she's been such a good mare for the farm, you know, obviously I'm ready Jed, I'm set to go and La Perriere have all been good race mares, but it's a, a, an amazing family, you know, obviously you go down to the, the likes of Mon Bay, uh, Sunny Ruby, etc, you know, it's such a good, strong uh, New Zealand family and um, yeah, this colt himself, he's a good, good, strong bone colt and, um, you know, we, uh, we really like him. 3x4 to balance image, that helps? Yeah, obviously, you know, you've got that inbreed um, both on the mare side and, and, and the stallion side, you know, so it's, um, yeah, you know, we try and match these horses up uh, pedigrees-wise and, um, you know, I know Pat spends a lot of time doing that and, um, yeah, generally he gets it right most of the time. Nah, beautiful family. 248, the Bay Colt by Classic Connection out of I'm Ready Set. 
Lot number 256 is a Bay Colt by the Ready Cash Stallion in Bold Eagle out of Kinvada Sioux. Yeah, Paul, this is, um, yeah, for me, it's a standout colt, you know, from a very, very good race mare in Kinvara Sioux. She was a two time Group One winner. Um, you know, obviously, out of that brood mare, Gem Pretty Peggy Sue, who also threw a, an Oaks winner and Pretty Majestic. So, yeah, it just keeps getting better and better. The family, obviously, the likes of Spider Girl and that, etc., down there. So, it's a beautiful type of colt. Um, and yeah, there's an update, I guess, with the mare, Kinvara Sioux. Um, her first foal actually died, as you can see, but her second foal qualified there uh, a couple of weeks ago, and, and we've got a big opinion of her. We have her ourselves in training. Um, her name's Kinvara Kate, and um, yeah, hopefully we're, we're trying to get her ready um, for the Nutrient Series, but she's a filly that we've got a massive opinion of, and um, yeah, this fella being a half-brother to her, uh, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to do him a lot of favours, I think, but um, it's, a, it's a very, very nice colt and um, has been from day one. Beautiful colt. That's lot number 256, the Bold Eagle out of Kinvara Sioux. Lot number 285 is the Brown Filly by Classic Connection. Uh, this one's out of the Ale Majestic Sun Mare in my Valerie. Yeah, it's a, it's a very, very good race family, Paul. You know, my Valerie was a very good race mare herself. You know, obviously took a mark of 154.8 uh, there at Menangle um, a fair way a while ago, you know. So it was, um, you know, at the time it was very, very fast. I think it may have even been a track record at the time. And, um, you know, she's only had the two life foals, um, three-year-old and older, sorry, and uh, for two race for two winners. And, you know, I think, um, yeah, she's, she's just worked very well there with the Love You Love you, Cross, with, uh, with Amal Maternal and King's Guard. And um, as you can see, the families work very well with Love You in general, Parisian chicks. So, you know, it's, it's a very good race mare uh, family and it's a very good Philly family. Um, you know, it looks to be uh, very much a Philly family. So uh, it's a Philly that, um, you know, we liked from day one. And, and obviously we decided to go Classic Connection because it's worked well with Love You. It's actually a three-quarter to a more maternal and Kingsguard, both are doing a terrific job um, on the racetrack and both, well, Kingsguard, of course, just still doing it right now. It's lot number 285, the Brown Philly by Classic Connection out of Mount My Valerie. Lot number 286, this is the Chestnut Colt, Colt by Classic Connection out of the Sundon Mare in My Chimera. Yeah, no, it's um, obviously, as you can see here, we've tried to go for the Love You Sundon Cross, which is worked uh, so well down here in um, in the southern hemisphere you know the likes of Mon Bay and uh, uh, I think uh, Enyan and horses like uh, Arbo etc they're all by uh, Love You out of Sundon Mare so we've um, tried to stick with that line um, the first foal out of the Mare Maya Shamira we've got in training um, I love him I think he's going to be a good horse um, He's a big chestnut horse also, and uh, I think in time he's going to be a real nice horse. But, yeah, it's obviously a very, very good family. You know, don't care. Uh, it's been a great horse for the farm, a flagship horse. Um, was one of the first yearlings that we sold. Um, and obviously he goes down to the, the American mare, Dreamland's Nancy, you know, so it's an imported family. Um, a very, very good family. Yep, absolutely. That's lot number 286, the classic connection out of the Sundon mare in my Chimera. Lot number 294, Anton, is the Brown Philly by Classic Connection out of One Star LB, an Italian mare. Yeah, Paul, it's, um, yeah, as you can see, it's a very, very good family. Uh, the damn One Star LB, she's a very good race mare in Italy, you know, made 140-odd thousand, but probably the highlight being that she's a sister, um, a half-sister to Call Me The Breeze, who, um, yeah, since, since uh, obviously this has been printed, there's been a few updates with him. Um, winning the Great Southern Star and also the Hammerhead in Sydney. So it's a very, very good international family. You know, the second dam, Gilly LB, was a Group 1 winner. Uh, actually a multiple Group 1 winner in Italy and, and there's just been an absolute broodmare gem. Um, yeah, just a fantastic, fantastic family. The third dam's also a Group 1 winner. Um, yeah, and this is a beautiful type of filly, a real racy type of filly. Uh, very, very light on her feet. She's been a standout from day one and um, yeah, it's going to be hard to see this one go. It will be indeed. Classic filly to look at, way she trots as well. And it also, I suppose anyone wondering about Classic Connection, that's the faith you guys have in him. You send him to a mare like this that could go to any stadium worldwide and uh, that's, a, that's the faith you guys have got with Classic. Oh, 100% Paul. You know, we, we um, 
you know, we, we sort of tried to really back the horse because we believed in him, you know. If we didn't believe in him, obviously, we wouldn't give him the opportunity. But, um, you know, he's a horse himself that's just got an amazing pedigree and was an amazing racehorse. So, for us, it was a bit of a no-brainer, you know. We think... Um, that highly of the horse that we, we gave him this type of mares you know this mare here she could be um anywhere in the world and and go to basically any stallion and and she's going to get a lot of respect um at, at any sale so yeah no we're we're you know we're very very satisfied that we did go to uh, classic with this mare and um it's thrown a beautiful filly a lot of people i would imagine worldwide will be looking at these bloodlines and uh hopefully tuning into the sale this is lot number 294 the Brown Philly Boy Classic Connection out of One Star LB, a Cantab Hall mare herself. Lot number 298 is the Bay Colt by Quaker Jet out of the Ready Cash mare in Ornay. Yeah, um, Paul, it's very, very good family. Obviously, the family of Sassy Pinevale's the second dam. She was a very good race mare for uh, Rossi Graham, I believe. Um, you know, the mare Ornay, um, if I remember correctly, I think she has had a fold to the races. Um, since this has gone to print. Since it's gone to print and a winner, um, Icky Guy. Yep. Um, the Volstead filly won its first lifetime start. Um, yeah, so she has had one fold to the races for, for a winner in Ornay. And, um, Pretty important and update, though. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, yeah, family of uh, the making this one actually a three-quarter to Electrojet, who was a good little race mare, won a Group 3 there, won the Need for Breed, uh, Need for Speed Silver Series, and... Um, and uh, yeah, very good family of the Galleons, Paradise, etc. So, it's a it's a good racehorse family. Um, you know, it's a nice type of colt and uh, one that you'd sort of expect to get up and go early. So, it's a good little good little colt. Lot number two hundred and ninety eight, the Quaker Jet out of Ornay. Lot number three hundred, the Brown Colt by Quaker Jet out of the Ready Cash Mare in Parisi. Yeah, no, it's a cracking type of colt this Paul you know as you've seen when when we had done the videos he was um, a really really good mover um, the mare was very very talented uh, Parisi was very very fast um, being group one placed and um, I think this is only a third foal um, from a very good New Zealand family you know the likes of I did it my way in any old way um, goes down to obviously the fourth dam being a dam the Sundon's way so very good strong New Zealand family out of a ready cash mare um, who, yeah, her, herself, she was a very, very fast, fast horse. So, um, you know, when, when this colt, uh, vi when we videoed him, you know, I thought we, we thought he was a very, very standout, standout video. Yeah, absolutely. It was my pick. Um, very fast. Hopefully the videos uh, replicate what we'll be able to see. But uh, lot number 300, the brown colt by Quaker Jet out of Parisi. He's almost black, I must say. But uh, yeah, cracking colt, that is for sure. Lot number 300. Lot number 301 is the Quaker Jet Bay filly out of the Ready Cash Mare in Parisian Opera. This is only her first foal. Yeah, and um, she was a superstar, the, the potential superstar, sorry, the mayor. Um, you know, she obviously only had a very, very short racing career. I don't think she had any more than 10 starts, um, um, you know, 10 or 12 starts maximum, but still won seven. I think she might have won six or seven straight, actually. And, um, yeah, very, very talented mare. Um, unfortunately, yeah, she went sore, but um, from a very good New Zealand family. Uh, you know, Queen's Rhapsody was a, was a good trotting mare herself, and, uh, you know, the dam of... Uh, the grand dam of Brandlow Prince, who done a great job for for uh, Chris Finocio, and um, then you get down to horses like Let's Get Serious, who made eight hundred thousand dollars life. So, very very strong family, and um, out of a very very talented Ready Cash mare. Um, you know, as you can see, we've gone with the Love You Ready Cash cross, which has you know worked so well in uh, you know, in Europe and France with the likes of Bold Eagle and FaceTime Bourbon, etc. All bred on that same cross. So. You know, that's the cross that works over there, and um, you know, we've tried to replicate it here with the son of Love You and Quaker Jet and a Ready Cash Mare, so from a very, very good family. Absolutely, and it's a Phillies family as well, and you've got a unique opportunity again, race one, and then be able to take it to the breeding barn later on. This is lot number 301, the Quaker Jet at a Parisian Opera. Lot number 307 is the Bay Colt by Love You, out of the champion mare, um, Anton Pizza Queen, a mare you had a real soft spot for. Yeah, no, she was a great mare to us, Paul, you know, obviously a mare that we bought out of out of the States and, um, you know, she come over here and done something quite rare. She won, a, won an Oaks as a as a three-year-old when, um, you know, I think she, at the time, was only maybe two. just turned three or yeah. not even three yet. I think she may have still been two. So, yeah, it just shows what sort of horse she was, you know, for for 
you know, med or affiliate to come all the way from North America to here and race it as a juvenile and, and win a feature race like the Oaks, it uh, takes a pretty good horse to do it. And, um, yeah, this is a, a cult that, you know, I guess you could say has been in the making for a very long time. I know when early days when we were looking at, you know, purchasing these type of mares, we were really purchasing these mares to go with Love You, you know, he was our flagship stallion and, um, and you know, we were really trying to get that Franco-American cross and, and uh, yeah, she was a mare that we really went after, you know, being a credit winner um, out of a very good, you know, family from, uh, from obviously the damn, uh, second damn Umbro Domino, it's been a broodmare gem with uh, Severium, you know, and I know just, you know, for a little fact that uh, Severium, I think the foal last year out of her might have sold for a couple of hundred thousand. Um, so it just goes shows you how, how good the family is. But, um, yeah, Waikiki Beach, I don't know if anyone knows, but he's actually the sire of Varen. So it's um, a very, very good family. And, um, yeah, Pizza Queen herself, she was a good mare to us. And, and this is a beautiful cult. So it's been a long time in the making, this cult. And, um, you know, this is the one that we, uh, yeah, we, I guess we could sort of hang our hat up on a little bit, you know, because we, we bought this mare with that intention just to go to love you. So uh, it's, a, it's a nice cult and out of a very good family. Absolutely. Lot number 307, the love you out of the credit winning mare in Pizza Queen. Lot 311 is the Bay Philly by Classic Connection out of Pretty Peggy Sue. Yeah, uh, what, what can you say, Paul? It's a, she's just become a, blue, a broodmare gem, uh, Pretty Peggy Sue. You know, she's, uh, she's already thrown two Group 1 winning uh, fillies in uh, Pretty Majestic at Kinvara Sue. And, and they're both fillies that we, we have retained, you know, obviously to, to, to keep to breed, you know. So that's... Uh, uh, once again, a chance to not only buy a, a potential good race filly, you're also buying a potential top broodmare, you know. Um, this is um, a very, very good family. Um, it needs no introduction, really, the Maori family. You know, it's so strong here in Australia. And, um, yeah, out of a mare that's just been an, an amazing broodmare, you know. she um, She's one mare, it's probably a little trivial thing, but... Um, at the end of the year, when you when you wean the foals off her, she's given her foals everything. There's not much left of her, you know. And and you'll see these mares out in the paddock are big and sort of flashy and dappled up, and and they'll have these small little runty foals on them. But um, every year, she's just given the foal everything. She'll look like basically like a bag of bones, nearly. You know, she just gives her foals everything, and I think that's just why she's been such a good broodmare. Um, you know, she throws big, strong foals, and um, you know, big, they end up being good, strong horses. And, um, yeah, this is a filly that I actually, it's probably the first one to actually look like the mum. Um, she, she has thrown them all sorts, uh, pretty Peggy Sue. I don't think there's been one that looks uh, like the other one, but this is the first one to actually look like her. And um, I loved this filly when I seen it. Um, I didn't know who she was early days. And then when we brought him in, it was uh, one of my top picks. Um, it's interesting you say that. Because I reckon I could nearly pick them off the videos. This is my third year doing the videos, and um, she throws that stamp on them. Um, I know the one last year and this year they look very, very similar in their action and, and things like that. So she definitely throws that stamp, which is can only be a good thing for for maternal and, and all the rest. And again, you've got a filly, you got the opportunity to buy into this family. Just pick any part of the page, and you're going to say, "Yeah, I'll take that home." Uh, a smart man told me that take the strongest one out and just see if you want the anything else on the page. Well, you can take any horse out of here, but you'll still want the rest of them. So it's a great little family. Yeah, there. yeah, definitely. That's lot number 311, the classic connection out of Pretty Peggy Sue. Lot number 315 is the Bay Philly by Quaker Jet out of the Ready Cash Marion, ready to shine. Yeah, Paul, this is um, yeah, one of the best families in the stud book. Obviously, yeah, it's a it's a family that we've had a lot of luck here with at the farm. You know, we've we've raced some some yeah, obviously uh, ready to shine itself, but also Glenferry Burn and and uh, all cashed up. If you go down to the bottom of the page and you know update there with him, he's he's now a, a New Zealand uh, record holder uh, over the 2700 meter stand. I think it was. So yeah, it's just a family that just keeps producing top horses. You know, Glenferry Dreamer, Della's Dash herself was a was an Oaks winner, Group One winner, and. Um, 
you know, the family of the champion in Speeding Spur and the likes of Glen Ferry Burn and it's just an amazing family that just keeps throwing good horses and um, once again, you know, you can see we've gone with the Love You Ready Cash Cross here and um, and also an update there with Sophie's Motion. She's now qualified and um, hopefully looking to race uh, in the Nutrient Series coming up. So, you know, it's it's... An amazing family. It's a very good family uh, also to breed from. You know, it's a potential broodmare uh, gem, this one. So, you know, we're, we're very, very high on the Quaker Jet fillies. You know, we've had a lot of luck with them. Um, obviously, I'm ready jet. Has, has been a standout, but um, there's been a couple others there that have done a great job too, you know. Um, so, yeah, um, I think the Quaker Jet fillies are going to be great brood mares also, um, as well as being great race mares. So, very, very strong family, very good filly family, and, um, yeah, beautiful type of filly. Absolutely. This is lot number 315. This is a Bay filly by Quaker Jet um, out of Ready to Shine. So you've got that Love You and Ready to Cash cross, and it's a filly, so you get the next uh, part of that as well. That's lot 315. Lot 319 is a Bay Colt by Classic Connection out of the Ready Cash Mare in Ready to Be a Star. Yeah, once again, Paul, it's... Um very very strong family you know it's a family one for the kiwis a bit isn't it yeah yeah it's a very very good kiwi family you know obviously you go down to the likes of temporal he's a superstar and and obviously uh even up closer there the second day my brother was a starter been a great mare for us obviously with um wilma's mate and then obviously a mortar frere amandine's a group one winner um, more fraternel um just a fantastic family you know and here's a cult uh Obviously bred on that love you ready cash cross. Um, the mare herself was unraced, but being a dam of being a daughter of ready cash, um, we definitely had to to retain her to breed, you know, and also being out of this family. So, yeah, here's a colt with a classic pedigree, and um, yeah, the second dam's a dam of three Group One winners. So, it's um, no reason why this colt can't get up and go. No, nah, absolutely, it's an exciting prospect. Lot number three hundred and nineteen, the classic connection out of the ready to shine, a ready cash, sorry, mare, ready to be a star. Well, Anton, the last of your yearlings um, being offered up, or the Yabby Dam Farms yearlings being offered up this year at the Nutrient Sale is lot number three hundred and twenty-seven, the classic connection out of Saint Etienne. He's a cracker, this colt. He's just a, he's got look at me written all over him. Ah, uh, definitely, uh, Paul. You know, he's one of them colts that you, you can sort of nearly say he's just been dipped in oil. You know, he. Um, <laughs> All the way through, he's just stood out. He's always had that healthy coat. He's always had that good shine. Um, he's a big, strong colt, and um, from a very, very good family. You know, it's a, it's a family that here at the farm we've really decided to back in. You know, and um, we've had a lot of luck with, obviously, you know, Prisian Moore. She was a very good race mare, but unfortunately, um, we lost her. Um, foaling, you know, so so that was probably a big reason why we decided to put the, the dam itself in foal, uh, Saint Etienne. So, you know, I love he's been a good racehorse for us, and um, he's a horse I think on the improve and, and he's going places. But then you get down to the likes of uh, Cor Cheval, um, you know, she was second in an Oaks and uh, was a group one place there a couple of times. And but she's now the dam of um, Val Torrens who won the Breeders' Crown there last year. So, yeah, it's a family. It's just full of good horses, not just good horses uh, or good winners, but good horses. So, um, you know, this colt here, as an individual, he's a Kraken type, um, has been from day one. And, um, yeah, he, he's a colt that, for me, is, is, you know, if I was spending my own money, I'd be looking at buying this colt. It's a very young family. When you quickly look uh, through it, just then, as you were saying, with Iron Love, of course, Shack the Anvils, a horse going places, uh, St. Germain, uh, Dream Big Aim, High Val Therens, they're all young horses with a big future ahead of them, aren't they? Yeah, you know, and I think it sort of goes like that, you know. I think families, they, they can get hot and, and then they can get cold, but um, I think this is a family right now that's that's quite hot, you know, and like I said, Val Torrens, you know, obviously um, being a Group 1 winner himself already and um, I think he's a horse that I think will improve as a three-year-old and, and do a good job and, um, yeah, you're 100% right, Paul. It's a hot family right now and um, and I think that's how it goes. So it's a good opportunity to, to buy into a hot family Family and, and he's a Kraken Colt. That's lot number 327. Well, Anton, thank you very much for that. Um, hopefully we've shined a little bit of light on a couple of those, especially those European uh, lines, but also some little updates there on a couple of horses that you guys have got in. Just um, classic connection, as I said, we'll go back and watch that video, but it's exciting, and I do love the bone that he leaves on these horses. I think, um, not speaking out of school, they're very, very big, strong horses, these horses they throw back to that love you cross. Yeah, no, definitely, Paul. He He's definitely stamped them as big, strong horses, you know. Um, um, to be honest, 
uh, personally, I haven't seen a, a small little weak one yet. You know, they're, they're all all very good bone, very strong strong type of horses. And, and as was he, you know, he was a big, strong horse. And, um, and yeah, it's good to see that he stamped them like that. Got a little filly at home that I show off to everyone. Don't worry, I'm pretty proud of him as well. Quaker Jet, um, what sort of stay in? He's a son in love you, but, um, you know, how do you rate him as a stay in? Oh, he's done such a, such a good job down here, you know. I don't know his actual statistics, but I think it's, it's something like 25 starters for about 18 or 19 individual winners. So, um, obviously, you know, uh, we've had a lot of luck with the Quaker Jet fillies in particular. Um, you know, I'm Ready Jet and I'm a Maori Jet and um, La Serena. Uh, we've, we've had a, a handful of very, very good Quaker Jet fillies. And, you know, um, but, you know, most importantly, I think with the Quaker Jet, he's been such a good broodmare sire. Um, uh, he was a horse with amazing pedigree. Uh, he was a very good racehorse. I think he made about 1.9 million euro as a racehorse. So, you know, he's a horse that just ticks all the boxes, and um, there's no, it's no surprise that he, he's done such a good job. No, uh, used to me, farm favourite. Beautiful horse, just flies under everyone's radar. Just keeps knocking out winners, doesn't he? Yeah, he's just such a such a cool horse, to be honest. You know, um, but he's another horse, Paul. You know, he's got a fantastic pedigree page. You know, like he's his pedigree page is uh, is as good as anyone's, really. You know, like he's he's very closely related to horses like Ekery D and um, a bunch of top horses. You know, and he was a very good racehorse himself. Used to me, you know, he was a group winner in France, and you know, we only gave him, I think. Uh, two starts here or, or three starts here and I think he was unbeaten you know um he won a, a group race there at Melton and um and he's done such a good job for such a small yeah. small number of mares and and also um uh, in a sense a low quality sort of yeah. mares you know we, we never really and we should have and, and if you could have your time back we, we'd support him a lot better but um early days we were a little hesitant on supporting him heavily because we, we were a bit unsure um, but he proved us wrong. You know, he's really done a fantastic job as a stay-in. Uh, Father Patrick, a stay-in, you guys don't stand. Everyone was off him last year for whatever reason. Uh, just kept leaving winners um, in New Zealand, especially this year. Just does a great job, Father Patrick. Yeah, yeah, you know, we've had a little bit of luck with the Father Patrick's. Uh, Paul, you know, obviously Egret's um, done a great good job you know she's won two British crowns and two group ones and um you know she she's a no superstar but she's a good little race mare and um yeah they for the most part I think they're quite easy um easy horses to get up and going they trot and um you know I think with the with the right cross with French French mares etc to, to get a bit of strength into them um he no reason why he can't throw a good one Always ready. He's got two. Uh, they're not too far apart. 225 and 242, actually. Uh, both uh, Colts. But um, through a bit of a stamp, he's a beautiful horse himself. He was a great racehorse. Um, and that, but you're excited to see he, what he can do now in the breeding barn? Oh, without a doubt, Paul. Like, I, I think just off the two Colts that we have here this year, um, next year we're going to give him a, a pretty good book of... Great bodies, haven't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we, it, there's just no reason why he can't be a good stallion. You know, he was precocious... Uh, he was two-year-old of the year, he, he was fast, he had great gait speed, he um, good gated, you know, and, and an amazing pedigree, you know, he's the son of Reddy Cash out of a out of a fantastic family, you know, the family of Sundon's Gift and Let Me Through, etc. So, you know, there's no reason at all why he can't be a good stadium and, um, yeah, after seeing his first two, uh, the, the two Colts that we have here, we're going to give him a good shot next year. Bold Eagle, um, not a lot of opportunities for people to purchase a horse by Bold Eagle in Australia. Yeah, true international superstar stadium, you know, um, I think he's the leading, possibly right now, the leading three-year-old sire in Sweden. Um, he's currently got probably, you know, if not the best, he's not far off being the best. Um, depends on who you talk to, I guess. A uh, horse in France, a horse called uh, Joshua Tree. Um, he was just phenomenal there through the winter meet. Uh, yeah, what do you make, five or six million euro? He was a champion, superstar, uh, unbelievable pedigree himself. Um, yeah, no, he's he's a very special horse. Unique opportunity there, that's for sure for someone. Uh, we got down to love you. Um, do we have to talk about him? You reckon? No, oh, probably not. Paul, you know, like uh, I think at one stage there he was a leading sire in five different countries. Um, I don't know if there's ever been a stallion anywhere in the world that's been able to do that. You know. Um, that's, that's just an amazing achievement, you know, to be the lead sire in five different countries at, at the one time. Um, and he's done it everywhere. He's done it in North America with horses like Venerate and uh, a 
obviously down here with the likes of Bombay and uh, you know, multiple others, Queen Alita, you know, she's, she's a superstar, a champion there. Uh, obviously all through, you know, Europe, France, uh, Royal Dream, Quaker Jet, Belina Jocelyn, uh, you could go on and on with the, yeah, just just keep throwing top horses and yeah, um, yeah he's he's a real champion stallion. And I, I can remember back, people said, oh, the love yous won't make it down here in Australia, we're too fast for them and all the rest and everyone's clambering to get one now and you've got a unique opportunity, you can actually purchase one at this uh, Nutrid sale. Eridan, this is one of the reasons I wanted to do it. What sort of horse was Eridan? It's a horse a lot of people won't know a lot about. Yeah, very, very early fast horse. Um, very, very good juvenile in France. Um, you know, I think he, he won a, a bunch of good races at two and three. Um, from a very, very good family. Topaz Diatut, his, uh, his dad was a very good race mare herself. Um, yeah, he's a horse that I know in France they expect him to be early horses, um, as was he. Um, obviously it's a little bit different culture, a little bit different racing system there. Um, but he was one horse that uh, they, they thought was going to be a really early horse and that's why we, we sourced the horse to, to, to come down here. Um, um, unfortunately, you know, he didn't get a, a big book of mares and, and not too many, but, um, you know, she was uh, the mare class of her own. She was a no-brainer for us to go to Eridan, you know, being a three-quarter to um, Always Ready, who was a very early horse, you know. That's what we were trying to do. You were trying to get a, a early, precocious horse, and, and I reckon this filly's that type. Absolutely, and then last stay in that um, part of the year yearling. So our draft is uh, what the uh, Muscle Hill, sorry, Muscle Hill um, stay in Southwind, Frank. Yeah, he, he's been an amazing stallion in North America off um, a very sort of low base of mares. You know, unfortunately, he was quite infertile. Um, you know, had he been fertile, I'd say he'd probably be one of the leading commercial stallions there in North America. Um, had a superstar filly there last year, three-year-old filly uh, called Bond. Yeah. Uh, Orcus Farnstead's uh, filly. She, she basically won everything there as a three-year-old filly. Um, yeah, but for whatever reason, um, unfortunately, he was he was infertile. Um, we got some semen down here, and um, you know we, we were looking for a, a good son of Muscle Hill, and, and chose him. Yeah, no, exciting. Hey, Tom, thank you. Uh, yearling sale is April 14 in Melbourne. It starts at 11 o'clock. The Yearling Parade is the day before the Saturday, but of course, there's races going through, and without the support of Harasta Trotters, especially through the Trotting Series, which is at Bendigo on the Wednesday night. I'm not going to try and guess the dates, but it is on the Wednesday. You might know it. Yeah. <laughs> um, the on tenth, the, the 10th, the, the, the going through as well. Um, we want people to come here and inspect these horses leading up to it. We're, we're recording this a fortnight from the sale, but um, probably go up about 10 days prior to the sale, but still get in touch with Wendy um, over there looking after the yearlings and make the time to come and have a look at them and hopefully you know, listen to what you've bit of information you've given there and, and come and check these out because it's an exciting draft. Um, you know, I mean, I get paid to promote them. There's no stress there at all, but it's an exciting draft. You have to say it is. When you look at these horses trotting like you and I were the other day when they were trotting up, it's a super exciting draft of yearlings. Oh, without a doubt, Paul. It's, um, you know, I think we're, we're getting better at it, um, you know, as a farm and, and you know, our, our mayor our mares are getting better and, and we're getting better quality of stallions and um, you know I, I think the breed's getting better down here most importantly you know and um, you know I think a lot more people are sort of becoming aware of that and